Welcome, this is Dr. Lonnie Simpson. And I'd like, tonight we have a very special guest. We're going to be talking with Dr. Clinton Rubin. And uh, Dr. Rubin's research has interested me for a number of years because of his work with vibration and how it impacts bone. But he's also studied vibration, uh, not just with bone, of course, but with other uh, means of uh, working with it, muscles, et cetera. But tonight, the main focus is going to be on bone. Um, and Dr. Rubin's research into non-invasive is really non-invasive, non-pharmaceutical intervention to control osteoporosis was referenced in the National Geographic January 2001 article about surviving space travel, which he'll talk to you in detail about, I'm sure. His studies show that the application of extremely low-level strains to animals and humans will increase bone formation and thus may represent the much sought after anabolic, which means building, stimulus in bone. So with that, Dr. Rubin, I would like to pass the controls over to you, and then I will come back and ask questions. And also, for those of you who want to ask questions, why don't you wait until after his presentation, and you can start sending them in. So take it away, Dr. Dr. Rubin. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. It's a pleasure to be here with you, although I'm probably 3,000 miles away. I'm calling you from New York, where it's also 10 o'clock rather than 7 o'clock. So a little past my bedtime, but I'll try to stay awake through this. So as Dr. Simpson pointed out, my principal interests are how physical signals, primarily mechanical signals, stimulate bone. So we get our funding from places like the National Institutes of Health or NASA to study the disease osteoporosis or uh, bone wasting. And it's really, so what I hope to present to, to you tonight is sort of a quick overview of the basic science that we that we've uh, used to sort of drive ourselves into the clinic, and then sort of quickly discuss some of the clinical trials that we've completed, ranging from children with disabling conditions up through uh, women, postmenopausal women who are suffering from osteoporosis. So I'm going to try to advance a slide, um, Lonnie. If you could advance a uh, slide forward. There we go. So, and, and let me also just point out that although I'm a hardcore academic, I'm a, a professor of bioengineering uh, out here in New York, that we've also used uh, this information um, through our clinical trials to start up a company. It's called Meridine Medical. I point that out not only because I'm very proud of it, but I want everyone that's listening to understand that I have a potential conflict of interest. So I will try to keep bias out of my comments, but please recognize um, that there, that conflict is actually there. So quite quickly, looking at uh, osteoporosis, uh, we're looking at trabecular bone or the spongy bone that you find, let's say, at the at, in your femoral head or in your, the top and bottom of your thigh bone. And what you see on the left panel is actually a very, very high-resolution CT scan of trabecular bone from a 20-year-old female compared on the right side, you can see there's quite, there's, there's much less bone in the 70-year-old female. And it's, the thing to remember is that it's not 70-year-old bone in the 70-year-old female. Bone turns over in all of us. It just, the ability to do that slows down um, with, with age. So that um, what you've got is you have a structure that is no longer able to hold up uh, the weight or the, the exercise challenges that you may put against the bone. And so what you can end up with is a higher risk of fracture. Uh, you can have atraumatic fracture, collapse of the spine. You might lose, lose height. Or you can have a uh, fracture of several bones, uh, primarily the, the femur or the femoral neck. 